Welcome, I'm Glenn Caruso, head football coach at the University of St. Thomas, uh, here on behalf of Athletic Director U with uh, two coaches talking about consistency. We have Coach Stiglmeyer, who's the head coach at South Dakota State University, and we have Coach Stockstill, who's the coach at Middle Tennessee State University. Both have been there for quite a while and amply qualified to talk about uh, what we're gonna discuss today. So thanks, gentlemen, appreciate you being here. Good to be here. So Thank there's um, obviously a lot that goes into someone being in a place for a long period of time. Uh, part of that is you're doing, part of that is other people's doing, but you've both been at the schools you've been at for a long time. How have you used your consistency at your specific school as an asset? Well, you, you want to find your niche to have success. And, and uh, you know, really when I think about it, we recruit young men uh, to SDSU that have had consistency in their, their upbringing, you know, the junior high, the, the high school that's been a, a process and so what we do when we get them there is we really go over the same thing year after year after year we call it the the mad manual and we go through the jack right away and, and really our oldest guy our older guys could teach our younger guys and we create uh, with 25 new guys we instantly get everybody on the same page and that creates consistency in our program and probably some leadership from the older guys to the younger guys while you're doing that too a, a ton of leadership a ton of mentoring some prayers in there. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Coach, how about yourself? I think our consistency, what I try to do is uh, try to be the same, let those players know what they're going to get every day. Whether you win a game, you lose a game, that you're going to coach and demand and expect the same things from them uh, on a daily basis. So uh, you win a game, you're not going to let things slide just because you want it. You're going to hold them accountable. Uh, to the same uh, level of expectation that you have every day. And, and if it's the off season, uh, winter workout, spring practice, that the goals, uh, the demands of our program never change, that they're always striving to be the best that they can be. So when you guys were younger in your career, uh, was there a, a crossroads or a time where you said, you know what, I think consistency is gonna be my calling card as a head coach, or was there a moment that you started realizing, I'm looking back, and <laughs> I am the guy that's been here for a long period of time. Was there a conscious effort to be the consistent factor at your school? You know, when I first started coaching, when I, when I was learning how to be a coach growing up, uh, you learn, you take something from all the coaches that you've coached under. And I was very, I've been very fortunate in the people that I've either played under or coached with. So I've learned a lot, and you know, you, you see, yeah, if I ever become a head coach, I'll do it this way. If I right. ever become a head coach, I definitely won't do that. Absolutely. So you're, you're evolving as a coach, especially when you're a young coach and you're developing your own philosophies and, and ways that you want to run a program if you're ever fortunate enough to get that opportunity. So to me, you have to be yourself. I can't be, you know, Coach Bowden or Coach Holtz or Coach Spurrier or guys that I've coached for. Uh, you know, I've got to be me. And, and then, but I have taken uh, bits and pieces from everybody I've coached with. Of course, I think we all do. Hopefully, if we do it well, like you said, we're doing it through the lens of who we're trying to be. How about you, Coach? Is there a moment where you can look back and say, you know what, I want this to be what I'm doing for my career? Not really a moment. I just want to reflect back on the Hall of Fame coaches that he got to be under. That's not bad, huh? Not bad. I've been very fortunate. No you know, doubt. I, I really, what we've done, and I would echo what Coach said, you have to be yourself. When I talk to young coaches, you know, you, you study under guys or you, you observe guys, you go visit them. Sure. But it's really, how did God wire you? And that's what you need to do. And that's what I've tried to do. Uh, I mean, I, I claim we're the most boring football program in America because literally I talk about the same stuff every year and that's been done for the last 22 years. So I think it's just, I think you always build a little bit also. You might add a little bit to it, but I think you start out with that basis of who you are. Well, I don't think anyone is going to watch this and say that what's boring is your record, because obviously you've been wildly successful doing it. Both of you guys have, but it does bring up a good point. You are who you are over time, and you're consistent because you do routine things routinely. So how do you guard against not being complacent and finding that balance between consistency but not going to complacency? Well, we, 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 we're on our players all the time to get better, right? Shame on me if I become complacent. You know, so you have some success. You know, uh, motivation is internal. So every day I come to the office, I've got to flip the switch and make the decision. And to me, uh, to, to battle 
complacency is my commitment to our players, my commitment to the administration, my commitment to the, to the assistant coaches and their families. And, and uh, I think the motivation is really easy when you look at it that way. And how about you, Coach? Yeah, I've always um, looked at complacency as, and I talked to our team about this, I'm never satisfied. Don't you ever be satisfied as a player. If, if you uh, won this game, you know, that, that game or this season shouldn't define who you are, that you should never be satisfied once you get out of playing ball when you're often, you've got your own family and you're providing for them. But if, to me, if you'll take the, you know, the philosophy, I'm never satisfied, I have to earn everything I get, I've got to prove myself every day. When I, kind of like Coach just said, when I walk in those doors in the morning, I want to prove to myself and prove to the people around that I deserve to be here, that I want to be better than I was yesterday. I want to beat whatever I did yesterday, I want to beat it. And, and that's, to me, if you'll have that, that mindset of beating yesterday, being better than what you were the day before, then complacency should never set in because you're always striving to get better each day. Well, and now that's two times in your, uh, I'm paraphrasing, but in your answer, you kind of referenced a process. It's about more a process of growth and then the results will take care of itself. But obviously, uh, even though I, I'm a big believer that that's the way to go about building a culture, we also pay thousands and millions of dollars for these scoreboards that are right in the end zone that have a big number on that side and a big number on that side. So in a day and an age, all the more devoted to style over substance, how do you have to make sure what do you do to make sure that the kids stay process oriented so they can have that mindset and not go stale? Well, I, I think the big thing, you have to challenge them every day. And uh, young people uh, want to be led. They want to be led. I believe they want discipline in their life. And, and to me, you've got to challenge them uh, because there is a winner and there is a loser, like you just said. They keep score in the, in the game. You know, so if they're going to keep score, why wouldn't you do everything in your power to try to win? Because that's what, in this profession, ultimately we're judged on. And, and I know we're all different as coaches and, uh, you know, there's more to us than winning and losing, but ultimately that's what we're judged on. And, uh, you know, so I, if I try to create as much competition throughout the the course of the year, whether it's winter workout, spring practice, the summer, you know, during the season, practice, our practices of, of just get, teaching them to learn how uh, to compete, you know, because some kids, you know, they think played the game, but they didn't, comp they didn't give, they didn't walk off that field with, you know, that tank wasn't empty. exhausted. You get there's a, there's a different level, there's no a, question. You know, and to me that. Uh, if you want to be great, if you want to be a great husband, if you want to be a great father, if you want to be a great player, you got to learn how to compete. And uh, it's got to be, you hate to say life and death to it, but it's got to be, you want to put everything you've got in it. To well, and, to and let's be real, even though it might not be life and death as some see it, it's how you live a life. You live a life the same way that you're going to be able to compete on the field, certainly different mediums, but that's a part of it. Coach, how about you? Do you see a difference? in it being tougher to get the kids nowadays to focus on the process than it was when you started your head coaching career 24 years ago? No, I hear that all the time, Glenn, and I, I, I fight it, if you will. Uh, maybe a little different approach in coach. Uh, early in my professional visit process, I talked to a coach and, and, and he said, get your seniors involved, get your captains involved, and then get out of the way. They're the guys that are around uh, the players. And so for our process, uh, I really, I meet with our captains, I meet with our council and really push um, those guys being on our page and then I encourage them to go one on one. You know, I, I, you know when we address the team, you know, uh, who's really listening? But when you look a kid in the eye, a young man in the eye, a student athlete, athlete in the eye, you can tell. And so I, I challenge our, our guys to do that in terms of uh, completing this, this mission we're on. And I, I remember the first year we competed against each other was 1997. We were at North Dakota State and you were at South Dakota State. And I don't even think I had gone on the internet at that point. So when you, when you think about how the communication has changed in the time that we've been coaching, we can say kids have changed or haven't changed, but what you can't deny is the interpersonal relationships are getting very difficult. And to keep that at the forefront is absolutely ultimate. So 
the word relevant is a word that seems to be a hot topic. How do you stay relevant? What are you doing to be relevant? I'm not exactly even sure what relevant is right now, but when you try and balance being relevant and staying up to current topic with what's going on, um, it's not exactly diametrically opposed from your consistency, but what do you do to continually stay fresh, stay relevant, and not only that, but find new ways to teach our skills to your players? Yeah, how do we become relevant, uh, stay relevant? Uh, I'll go back to coaching. I think this is so important. Uh, I have to be myself. If, if I take the way the world is going and try to be something different than I am, uh, it, it's not going to work. It, it won't feel good to me, and the players will see through it. And so in terms of relevance, uh, I really think that's part of our assistance. Uh, you know, the younger coaches to be involved, sure. to be more connected with the players. Every once in a while, I'll hear a player say a word that I have no clue what it is. <laughs> you got to go Google it? And no, I'm going to ask him. And okay. He, he, he defines what it is, and I said, why don't you just use those words? <laughs> you know, the other day I learned what drippy means, you know, and, and so uh, they laugh at that, but again, I'm being myself, and they respect that, and I respect them. So uh, way off the grid, what does drippy mean, Coach? I have no idea. I think it means you look really cool. Fair enough. Probably why I've never heard it before, to be <laughs> honest with you. Coach, how about you? It's tough, but how do you stay relevant? When they go, when you say, tell them that, when you go back and see them, say, you got a lot of sauce. And sauce? Yeah. Yeah. Now that one I've heard. There you go. Now, it's, uh, to me, it, it kind of goes back to, you know, the complacency question that, you know, you're, you're constantly studying, you're constant on a constant quest to learn more. You study other coaches being where we're at, we can't afford to bring in the motivational speakers and the life skills people that the Alabamas of the world can. Right. So, but you can get that information off the internet. And you know, I put little videos together to, to show them of other people talking because I think they need to hear another voice at times also. Uh, but just on a, a quest to, I read a lot, I try to watch other coaches, uh, study NFL, you just constantly learning and trying to improve yourself, uh, improve yourself as a coach. There is so much basis. content that's out there. That's one of the benefits. I'm Glenn Caruso talking consistency today with two longtime coaches, Coach Stockstill, Stockstill from Middle Tennessee State University and Coach Stiglmeyer from South Dakota State University. Um, coaches, obviously we'd love to think that every decision we make is going to be a good one, but we know quite often we fail, like routinely. Um, there's no way that you can be in coaching as long as the both of you have without recognizing, correcting, and moving forward from that. So what are some indicators when you look at your cultures? Um, you might start to see some red flags pop up and know when you have to start to change something. And maybe it's not changing a core belief. Maybe it's changing how you're communicating those core beliefs. How do those indicators pop up in your program? Well, uh, and, you know, a number of ways. The strength coach will talk about uh, maybe guys wandering a little bit. We'll have guys missing more classes, uh, which I always think of as uh, disrespectful to the entire program. Without a doubt. What we do when anything comes up, we go back to the basics. We go back to consistency. And if anything, we narrow down our focus. A couple of years ago, we were one and two in the conference, and we were picked to win it. And uh, we, we talked about one thing from then on out, and that's being 1-0. 1-0 and on Tuesday to Saturday. And uh, whether it was the right thing to say or not, uh, that's what we ended up doing. So when we, we feel things are, are, are maybe a little shaky or something, we go back to the foundation. Simplify. I'm going to go back. We said the same thing for the last 22 years. And maybe a little different than coach in terms of, of incorporating things. But, uh, again, that's been our, our equation. And Coach, how about you? I've been going on now 12 years at one school. You're going on 14 years at one school, but you've certainly forgotten more football than I'll ever know. I don't know about that. Well, I, I think so. But what are the programs, what are the things that happen in the program that kind of show you, okay, it might be time? What are those indicators? Well, I've always said, and I believe this, that you have to win off the field before you can win on it. And, and that goes back to how you live your life. Are you going to class, like Coach just said? Are you doing the right thing socially? Are you making choices, decisions off the field that are winning decisions that are going to put you in a position to be successful? If they're not, if you're that guy missing class or you're that guy uh, making poor choices off the field, you're going to be the guy that jumps offside on third and one. It always it, it works that way. And uh, so there's always, 
indicators that you can see in a guy that if his grades start slipping or if he's not giving the effort or whatever in practice, you know, he, probably an indicator that he's staying out too late. You know, so there's a lot of things like that. Uh, but, and I've always, I've always taken pride. I've always been called a player's coach. Okay. And that has a different, you know, meaning to some people. Some people look at it as, oh, you're soft. You know, you, you won't make hard decisions. Other people, you know, have their own opinion of it. I look at it as a, your good coaches are all player coaches because that means they're involved in every aspect of that player's life, from what's going on with his girlfriend to his family life, his, his mom, his dad, socially, school, everything that, you know, I'm involved in their life. And, and when, you, when, you're in that, when you're that involved, then you have, you, can, you have a better feel, a better read when something's not going right, when there's a red flag like you talked about as an indicator. Well, and you bring up the assistant coach, and I think that gives us a great opportunity to talk about them a little bit because, as you were saying, leading the leaders and getting those guys, your first ring leaders are, you know, really your coaches. So when you look at the growth and the hiring ability of those guys to carry your message, when you look at it through the lens of consistency, what do you look to hire? And then once you get them there, how do you grow those coaches to get your message across, coach? Yeah, in hiring a coach, the first thing I always look at, I want to hire a good person. You know, you could be the greatest coach in the world, but if you're not a good person, uh, if you're not a good husband, if you're not a good father, you're not going to be a good coach. It's ne I've never seen a bad husband that was a good coach. I've never seen a bad father that was a good coach. It, it works that way. So I'm always going to hire a good person first, and then hopefully he's a good coach. Uh, he's on a quest to be, you know, to to move up in the profession that he's he's got goals and ambition to go uh, to 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 go and at our level it's hard to keep guys okay. assistant coaches because we can't pay him what you know the SEC the bigger schools the, sure everybody. so we're going to lose coaches uh, you know a lot of times because of that but you know you tell a coach what you expect uh, what you want from him how you want him you know he's got a coach within his personality but. Uh, at the same time, he's a reflection on me and our program. So, you know, you can only take a little bit so much that might be outside those lines right. of your what you see. And, and if they do get outside those lines, then you got to bring them back in and say, hey, you need to be more positive or you need to do this in recruiting or you need to do this. I ask our players a lot of questions. You know, you know how do you like playing for coach? How we, and, and they trust me, and they'll tell me, love him. And, uh, I, don't, I didn't like the way he coached, all that. Sure. So all those indicators, and then, you know, ultimately, if you know, it's not, you're not getting what you hoped you would get, then you have to make a decision on letting somebody go. Obviously. Coach, what do you look for when you hire, and through the lens of consistency? Yeah, I go back to what I was taught on the farm. My dad taught me, uh, echo what Coach said, be a good man, be a man of character. Uh, that sets you up for success in any field. Um, hard work, I think that's inherent in, in our position, but it's not natural for everybody. So I really look for proof of hard work. When we interview a guy, and we spend a day and a half with him. Okay. You know, I'm not interested in who knows who in, in hiring a guy. We really uh, right, try to discern what the guy's about. And then, then I think one thing that's missing in coaching at times, because for most coaches, football's easy but they're not teachers, and so they don't understand why this guy that's an electrical engineer can't learn how to play linebacker. <laughs> right. And so we really uh, put them through the, the trials of, of teaching us football. And, and obviously we know it, and it's easy, but how meticulous are they? And uh, again, I, I love feedback from players. I, I love it. They're, they're not going to, when they trust us, when they love us, they're going to tell us exactly how they feel, and that gives, allows us to communicate back uh, to the coaches. And j just in the last session, Coach Cutliff was mentioning that as well about the, the growth and learning from other people. You can learn from your players, you can learn from your coaches, and sometimes as coaches that have been, it may be a attractive and it might not be for an assistant coach to come and work with you because you've been at a school for a long period of time. It might be attractive for a player, but there's also things that we can gain from them. So what are some of the keys that when you see a staff member, how do you balance the new ideas that a new staff member is going to bring with your way, your plan, and your program? That's an interesting question. 
because when you hire a guy from a successful program and they're eager and a lot of times they're a lot younger than I am, they're going to come in with all these ideas. And, <laughs> and I'll be honest with you. I sit them down and I say, this is the Jack Rebel way. I literally go through our MAD manual with them. And I'm going to say, you allow this to soak in. You allow this to soak in. I am all for your, your ideas, but I don't want them day one. I don't want them week one. I want, them, I want you to understand how we do things. And I really got that from a banker. I talked to a very successful banker, and he talked about when he, he hires somebody else from another bank, he said, I don't want to hear about the other bank. He, didn't, he never wanted to hear about it. Sure. This is the way we do it. And so eventually uh, they start coming in the offices and sharing stuff. But I want them to be on our page before they create another new idea. And I mean, I think that makes sense because if you let anyone go rough shot, you're going to be wasting a lot of time. At least that way, when they come in your office after a month or a year, you know it's done through the lens of what you're laying down as a culture. Coach, how about you? How do you balance that with the coaches and their ideas? Yeah, you know, I'm, I think one of the key traits for a leader, any leader, is you, the ability to listen. And uh, I'm always open uh, to new ideas of doing things. Uh, you know, I tell our coaches, you know, each coach has one vote. You know, that's ten votes. You know, but I got one more and all of yours added together. You know, so I'll listen up to a point, you know, and if I think it's good, if I think it, if it, if it makes us better, if it, it'll, if it has something to do with making us better, I'll do it if I believe in it. Uh, so I, I listen and, and I'll go through, you know, each phase of the year. You know, if you start in January, once recruiting is over, once spring practice is over, once summer is over, once August camp is over, after each one of those areas of the year, we sit down as a staff, what did you like that we did? What didn't you like? You know, uh, be while it's fresh on their mind. And, you know, I'll write it down, I'll listen to it, and. Yeah, that's a good idea. No, I've been doing it this way forever. I'm going to continue to do it this way. So um, just constant communication, you know, is key in, in anything. Uh, but when you're dealing with as many players as we deal with and, and coaches and administrators, that communication is key. So I listen to a lot of people and uh, give them a, a chance to voice their opinion and some things you like and some things you don't like. Of course. I. I Go back to what my dad told me with listening. The good Lord gave you two ears and one mouth, so you listen twice as much as you talk, and I think that serves everybody well. Well, that wraps it up for us. Coaches, thank you so much. Uh, Coach Stockstill, Coach Stiglmeyer you. talking about consistency. And uh, for myself, Glenn Caruso, and for Athletic Director you, hope you enjoyed your time. Make it a great day.